Hi, everybody. This is Sterling McGarvey, and we are here checking out NHL 13, and I'm joined by... Sean Ramjack Singh, producer on NHL 13. And the demo is up on Xbox Live right now, but uh, we're here giving you a bigger overview of it, straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Literally from the horse's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, give us the rundown of... Uh, what we can, what can we expect to see for those of uh, those of those watching out there that haven't had a chance to pull the demo down? Uh, what's going to be, what's big and what's different? I know from what I've played, um, I'm not necessarily the biggest hockey guy, but I love just the feel, the momentum, the speed, that sense that you get from uh, from playing it. Yeah, you know what, we wanted to go big with NHL 13. Um, you know, we've had you know a good couple of years, a good run, and we wanted to take that next big leap of the franchise, and this will be. You know the the biggest leap for the franchise on this generation of console. Really excited about the feature set we have. Um, you know, three main things we focused on: innovating the core gameplay experience. We want to overhaul our gameplay. We want to really make a mark, make 13 feel different than any other game that we've played. So we've innovated the core gameplay experience with our new True Performance Skating and EA Sports Hockey IQ. The True Performance Skating, which we'll get into in a second, has changed the game so much that we needed to basically overhaul our AI as well. We spent more time on our AI this year than we have in the past three years combined, just really trying to round out that gameplay overhaul. And then, you know, the next two things is two brand new modes, two brand new connected modes. Mm -hmm. One is GM Connected. GM Connected is the largest multi-user online dynasty ever seen in a sports game. So you've seen games out there with 30 or 32, give or take, people that can be part of a single league. We can have up to 750 people as part of a single league anywhere in the world. We took our most played mode offline, BGM, combined that with their big innovation from NHL 09, the Esports Hockey League, and OTP. So now, you know, you can be the commissioner, you can be the GM, you know, 29 of your friends be the GMs of the other teams. You can have up to 24 people on your team and play the game OTP style, six for six at any point. So if you're, you know, if you're not a joystick jockey like some of us. Uh, you have your friends play the game for you. So that's you know that's a big feature for us this year, something we're really excited about. And the other connected experience is really connecting fans to the sport of hockey, NHL Moments Live. And that's a scenario mode, a bite-sized gaming experience. Not all of us have the hours and hours we used to back in the day to sit and play games all day. So, you know, here you can grab NHL 13, hop in for, you know, up to you know a two-minute experience, anywhere to a 20-minute experience, play up to 26 scenarios that come on the disc. And the cool part about this feature is, you know, working closely with our great partners at the NHL, we can get video from them as situations occur in the upcoming season. Cool scenario happens, we can get the video from them, pump it in the TV screen like you see on the main menu right now, play that scenario out, understand the scenario, then go into our game and play it out, recreate history or change history. So when we talk about live services and games moving towards live services, this is our, you know, first attempt at doing that. Free content, uh, you know, as cool stuff happens, we'll make it cool and available in our game. All right, sounds good. Let's dive in. I'm going to take you into uh, I'm going to take you into practice mode to start off with because you know the the true performance skating really is a game changer for us. Something that uh, that's completely changed the way the game plays, the way it feels, the way it looks. So it's important that we go in here. Uh, let's take uh, we'll take we'll take Joe Thornton in. We are in the Bay Area, so <laughs> it's where we are filming. Yeah. So true performance skating for us was all about overhauling our skating engine. It's about explosiveness, so making sure the guys who can see a gap and get to a gap and accelerate quickly, you have that sense in our game. It's about top end speed, so the fast guys feel fast and there's differentiation. You know, as you recall from E3, we did a lot of uh, A-B comparisons with 13 versus 12 and showing you how players in NHL 12 all basically skated the same speed and there was no sense of momentum, you can cut it on a dime. And that's what we're trying to encounter here with the top end speed part, getting that player differentiation so fast guys feel fast. Mm -hmm. And the last part is the momentum. So the whole new skating system is driven by real-time physics. So when you're going at your top end speed, you get the reward of going really, really fast. Mm -hmm. But you know whether you're running or driving a car or skating on ice, when you're going at top end speed, you can't turn on a dime. So you're going to see when I get to top end speed and I try and cut what that looks like as well. So literally, you know, all of this stuff I'm talking about here, extremely accessible. You talk about newbies, people who haven't played NHL for a couple of years, or people who heard NHL is a sports, great sports game, but never actually had an opportunity to play it. We really focused on making this entire game really accessible to everyone. Literally pushing up on the left stick here will give me my explosiveness. Holding up will get me into my top end speed, and we'll see what happens after that. So I'm just pushing up on the stick, and gives me that explosiveness. I get into top end speed here, and I want to show you this real quick, because this is important. So this is Joe Thornton. 
you know, just me pushing up on the left stick and I get into, I'm going to focus on the skates here a little bit. I get into the glide and I'm pushing up and get into top end speed there. You see a player getting to put one hand on the stick. He's going yeah. as fast as he can. And now I try and cut in. And last year I could basically wrap myself around that face-off circle if I wanted to. Yeah. Because of how fast I'm going this year, look at the... Oh, yeah. Skates carving through the ice. You know, yeah, and that's... deeply. At the same time, my controller's rumbling, telling me that I'm going against my momentum, going against physics. All that. So really, you know, giving a sense of weight and momentum to the players, which is something that, you know, our fans have said that our players are a little bit floaty in the past. You know, again, trying to react to the fan feedback and give them exactly what they want is a sense of momentum, a sense of weight. And this, when we get into gameplay itself, you'll see how momentum is a real game changer for us and the fact that now that I know that Joe Thornton's coming at full speed and is going to have a hard time cutting in, me defensively, I can just I can sit somewhere where that, where that cursor is there and mm-hmm. cut him off because you can't get that scoring area going the speed that he's going. And obviously the faster, quicker guys, the guys are more agile, can cut a little tighter than that. But, you know, it's being able to make the same reads that an NHL player would make in the real NHL or playing a real game of hockey. And that's what, you know, this... This year's gameplay really brings out the fact that you need to make the right decisions that a hockey player has to make. And the last part of the skating, and this is, you know, this is really cool and a testament to all the gameplay guys and the entire team back at home, is we have over a thousand new animations in the skating system. And again, we talk about accessibility. It's left stick and left trigger opens up, you know, all 1,000 animations to you. In 07, our big innovation was the skill stick, where we gave you. Mm-hmm full control with the upper body, left to right. So we wanted to do the exact same thing. For us to take that big leap that we wanted to with our gameplay, we needed to basically do what we did with our hands, do that to our feet as well, and take the shackles off our feet. So, you know, left stick and pressing the left trigger gives me full control of my player. I can sit in the back skate all day if I want to. Letting off puts me back into a front skate. Oh, right, wow. So you combine that, you combine this with the right stick, and you literally have the tool set of, a, of today's NHL player. So now we talk about, you know, being authentic. If I see a player, you know, a player in real life coming down, a left-handed player coming on the right wing, and they want to make a cross-ice backhand pass, you know, a pretty low percentage pass. A guy like Joe Thornton or Sidney Crosby can make that pass, but the major- majority of guys aren't going to be super accurate with it. We can penalize you more for doing that because now we give you the opportunity to score up to the play. Oh, nice. Or same thing if you're coming down, you know, if you're coming down and cutting across the middle, you can give the ability to score up shoot back across you. Also in the offensive zone, you can use this to help protect the puck. You know, keep your body, keep your body between the puck and the defender. So lots of different uses for it, lots of creativity. And literally when we're playing this, you know, I've already had the demo dropped today. We already had people send me videos of incredible stuff that we didn't see during the entire course of development. So we like to say, uh, you know, on the HL team is we just like to give people the tools and see what they can come up with, what kinds of combinations they can up, come up with as opposed to more of the old school game design where we'd say, we want the specific move in there, let's map it to a button, and then you run out of buttons real quick. Yeah. So that's a little bit of the true performance skating. Why don't we go into, uh, go into gameplay a little bit and yeah, let's, check let's it talk out. about some of the, uh, the AI stuff in there. Crosstown rivalry, maybe? There you go. Little Perpetual rivals. <laughs> so there's three parts to the EA Sports Hockey IQ, which is you know our, our AI overhaul. And the first part is we have five times as many strategies in the game as we had in the past years. And that's just you know to stay up to date with what's happening in the world of hockey and the way the teams and coaches are coaching the game today. So you can customize the way you want your team to play. You want them to be aggressive on the four check. You want them to sit back in a 1-3-1 or a 1-4 or a 2-3 blue line. Whatever you want, you can make your team play the way you want them to play. You can adjust that on the fly using the D-pad throughout the game. Easily accessible to you. The second part is just offensively and defensively. Players being aware of what their roles are. And not just being aware of where the puck is and what they need in relation to the puck, but where the guys off the puck are the guys that they need to be guarding and being respectful of their, their roles within the forecheck that they're in or the defensive assignments they're in. So that's the second part of it, just players being more aware on and off the puck. And the third part, which we're really excited about, is our goalie overhaul. So goalies in the past you know, only knew about the primary puck carrier, the primary scoring threat. So in a 2-on-1, for example, he would know the puck carrier has a chance to score on him or take a shot or deke on him, but wouldn't be aware of the second guy. So this year, he understands that there's a secondary threat, there are potential passing options. Sometimes you'll see him anticipating over, leaning over, and you can pick that short side corner. The cool part, though, is we've given the goalie 
individual control over each one of his limbs. So now when a goalie dives across, he can move his limb basically in any direction, his arm in any direction, or his leg in any direction, or his stick in any direction to get it to the puck. So what we've done there is basically open up an infinite amount of goalie animations for the goalie to make them more active, more ag- agile, more realistic, more authentic. And as we're going in here, I might as well talk about some of the presentation stuff we've done. Our presentation overhaul has been amazing. Just every single detail in the game from, you know, the quality of the skates to the, the sock, to the sock tape, to the ribbing on the socks, to the, you know, scuff marks on the pants, to the visors. Uh, just everything's been touched. The lighting in each one of the arenas. We can go to the Winter Classic after. We can see what we've done there. Some amazing work by the team. So just really excited about that. And then the second part of the presentation is just really trying to replicate true broadcast. So we've gone away from the non-interactive sequences when the puck goes out of play. Mm -hmm. We spent so much time on our AI, whistle to whistle. We also wanted to be intelligent after the whistle as well. And what that allows us to do from a presentation perspective is then cut to players on the ice that are AI-driven, that are doing appropriate things. And the Los Angeles Kings. LA's offensive rush meets head on the opposing defense. If the trapping team is ready to go, I think that style will dictate. But if there are holes in the trap, look out because this rush team will pick it apart. Blossom. So here's some of the true performance skating. See, LA's got an extremely aggressive forecheck here. You'll notice, you know, in, a, in past versions of the game, you've been able to you be able to press the pass button two or three times to get out of the zone, no problem. This year, with all the new systems we put in the game, it's a lot more strategic coming out of your zone, and you got to think about where you're making passes. And again, just making you making you think and make the decisions that a real NHL player has to make as they're coming out of their zone against this aggressive forecheck here. To Thornton. You know, a great way to score this year is getting the setup, work the puck around, look for screens in front, look for deflections, just good hockey goals is what we want to try to achieve. Good rebound goals, shoot for rebounds, things like that. And yet another turn away. Yeah. Let's take a look at this, what happened here. A little uh, Jonathan Quick, looks like Jonathan Quick being Jonathan Quick, making the first save. So here's, you know, here's something that you wouldn't see in past games is going making the first save, and then being able to make a desperation scramble, get that leg out, yeah. save at all costs. I mean, that's what, that's what he did to take him to the cup. He's making a couple of them in a row right there to Williams. Snap that one on the glove. Save and a beauty to Marlowe. I want to show you one more thing here. So we talked about sure. speed earlier in practice mode. We talked about top end speed. But we also wanted to capture the control part because, you know, we talked about the risk-reward of going really fast. We also want to reward people for being in control. And so here's an example of me getting speed. I might have been able to beat Dowdy wide. Dowdy's a pretty good skater. So I decided to go into a glide, a more controlled state. I see Dowdy starting to close the gap. Mm -hmm. And just by using my left stick, again, we talk about accessibility, just the left stick to the 45 there, I do a little cut move away from him as he goes for the stick left and I get around him. So going into a glide, a four, you know, put the stick to a 45 or a 90 either direction, gives you these moves. This is basically like a loose puck deke without having to use multiple buttons. Again, mm-hmm. just really focus on the accessibility of the new skating. Great save! Ooh, what close. a move. <laughs> Breaks up the passing. You also notice, you know, defensively now. Defensively, because there's, because there's, you know, the fast guys are fast now, you have to understand who's coming at you, how fast they're coming at you, how fast are you skating backwards. And just, wow. There's a great NHL 13 goal. Get it back to the point, set up, deflection. Good hockey goal there. That was solid. That low slot. They got it down there and they score. Low glove side. I mean, that's an area that every goalie tries to protect. Brand new net camera. We talk about the presentation and replicating broadcast. Brand new net camera there. In the first period, always looking for that very first goal. Changes the complexion of the game. They got it. And I think these guys have been good defensively, too. I mean, they've got this game where they want it, at least early. Scored by number nine, Martin. Nice save. 
to Moore, to Galliardi. Two on two on the rush. Able to pick that one up. Wrist kicked away with a blocker. Winnick's really battling in front. Breaks up the offensive opportunity as he poke checks that one away. Braun to Winnick. Dumps that in. Picks that puck up in front of the net. That's in his own defensive end. Dangerous land right there. Another strategy you see a lot of people using in the NHL today, third, fourth liners, is just a dump and chase. So now, you know, if a team wants to stack it at the blue line, play in a 1-4, something like that, make it tough for you to enter the zone, there's a good example of LA sport check and how aggressive they are. The dump and chase now works. You have your guys going with speed, your wingers going with speed, dump to the opposite side or ring around the boards, and you guys can get in there and, and uh, get the puck back. You'll see the CPU doing that to you as well. To Marlowe. Center ice on the wing with the puck. Give him credit for a block. I don't think he even saw that one. Another good example of just some of the some of the AI work we did this year and defensemen or forwards just recognize either on the rush or the setup that there's space in the high slot there, get into a high scoring threat area, open themselves up for the pass. Shot gets blocked, but a good scoring opportunity. And that's just the AI recognizing those opportunities. Shoots! Save! Time hit right there, right along the boards. That hurts. To Marlowe. Trying to control the puck to Burns. Got that stick in and interfered with the puck. Less than a minute to go in the period. The shot. Here's a little example of using some of the, uh, I'll show that right here in replay. Using some of the skating to help protect the puck. I see Gagne coming. I'm able to uh, press the left trigger to wheel around him there and get back into the high slot and get a little shot on net. Scoring opportunities when they get that puck in the zone, they may keep doing this because right now that point is open. Well, defending, you, you can't give a guy this much room to free wheel. It's going to kill you. When we talk about the strategies, I'm just scrolling through all the different forecheck strategies right here for San Jose. I can also change my bias if I want to be super aggressive in the forecheck or sit back in a neutral zone trap. And I can also control how I want to play through the neutral zone as well. So really full customization of my team, allow them to play the way that I want them to play. Loose puck and he's got it. Good effort on the poke check. That'll roam that puck away. On his own. Chance. Score. Uh-oh. There's some <laughs> speed pulling away from me, making me pay. Well, there'll be some Kings fans that are happy the demo. This section of the demo didn't end uh, with a deficit. <laughs> Came by rushing the puck and he didn't miss it. Boy, if you That's a good goal. The middle of the ice to cross the blue line and you've got good little net cam shot. Oh, you are going to attack and that's what they did. You know, one of the things people really appreciate this year on the Deeks especially is the ability to open the goalie up and shoot five hole, score goals five hole, which is something that's been extremely, extremely difficult or near impossible in previous versions. But uh, this year it's a viable way to score. Again, just trying to make up, you know, trying to open up good hockey goals for everyone to play. After one, Excellent. it is one one. You win games by controlling the ice, and in this case, it's being controlled. I'm going to take us into, uh, I'm gonna take us into the, the Winter Classic and show off that environment a little bit right now. All right. Give you a little taste of that. Something that uh, visually just is stunning. It really shows off all the presentational elements we, the, we focused on this year. Here's a look at the new Winter Classic, and uh, really, really shows off the visuals and the work that we've done. The breath and the lighting on the players and the jerseys just pop in the sky, and just everything just looks great in here. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to South Philadelphia, the 2012 NHL Winter Classic. Two sets of alumni standing proud to watch this great spectacle. These two teams, who have faced off as bitter rivals for 45 years, are going to go to battle again. We're talking Rangers and Flyers. See some of the detail on the jersey there. We're going to leave everything they have out on the ice, this fantastic venue in front of a sold-out crowd of nearly 50,000 people. And speaking of the venue, what a way to go back to the grassroots of hockey for many of these hockey players. I was going to hop in real quick because we were talking about some of the visual stuff. I want to show you uh, 
just some of the detail that we put into. Oh wow! This year, just to the detail on the skates. To yeah. I mean, you see the ribbing in the socks and the scuff marks on the pants there, and the visors and the heads and just everything. Just you know, our, the team did an incredible job just up, updating everything in the game and just making it really, really pop. What I'll do here is just change my settings. The uh, best way to play in this brand new uh, True Broadcast camera is switch your controls always up, in my opinion. So, who grew up playing outdoors, but I'm so it gives you a completely different perspective. Like this. To Richards, Hope checks it away. He'll move it himself. Big battle along the boards to McDonough. To Anisimov. He'll take that one back and skate with it. Good pass to Anisimov. On the return, he's got it again. To Anisimov. Takes the return. Gets that puck back. Wrist shot on. Oh, save. To Hartnell. Girardi. And there'll be a delayed penalty. Arm is up. There's the whistle. Now we'll get the penalty. The Flyers are picking up a minor penalty here. That's going to be two for boarding. Hard hit. Oh, man, that is boarding. You oh, yeah. Wow, you rocked it. <laughs> I don't think there was any way around you know, we talked, about, uh, we talked about the speed versus control and, you know, giving you some benefits for doing less, going to a glide and giving all the moves. So same thing applies defensively as well. Defensively, you know, we really want to reward people for playing good positional hockey this year. Being aggress super aggressive is probably not the, the most effective way to play. Uh... You know, just be in a good position. Players will have active sticks, knocking pucks away, intercepting passes. You know, if a player has a puck, you know, their team has a puck at the blue line, wind up for a slap shot, you skate out to him and you let off the stick. Again, just going to that glide and being in control, you get a contextual shot block. So really just trying to give you what you would expect by being in a nice control state when the glide. Picks that one up in the offensive zone. Shot, kick, save, and a good scoring opportunity. Let's see if I can race him for this putt. Delzano. This is a good example of how the momentum has really changed the changed the game here. How you have to make different decisions. So, you know, we're racing for the puck here, and right about here, I realize I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get to it first. The proper play here, I should have probably peeled off and started to get back on defense. But instead, I kept going full speed. CPU makes a tight turn, makes a pass, and look at where I am. I'm, I'm done. The yeah, momentum you're way just, out. My momentum just takes me completely out of the play. So, you know, as you tr as you start playing the game and become efficient at the game, you're going to realize that the best thing is not to be always be going full speed. Uh, being in control actually has more benefit than going top speed all the time. So just that in itself, and the, the lines that you take, and understanding who's going to win races for the puck, and all those things have, you know, just added to the amount of decisions that you have to make and how you want to play and add to the strategy of the game, which is, you know, really makes it the most authentic experience that we've ever put together. Couldn't receive that. He got knocked away. Arm up. We've got a penalty coming. Delayed call. Let's see what this is. Mitchell's penalty. Two minutes interference. Yeah, I don't know. This is kind of borderline. I mean, you're allowed to have your ice and hold your ground. I'm not sure this was an interference call, but he's gone anyway. Face-offs in a four-on-four four gives you a big-time chance if you can get that puck early. Still has it in the offensive end. Philadelphia's power plays now on as the man's out of the sin bin. Penalty killing effort working. Bordeaux. Through the center. Breaks that up with a good defensive play. The Flyers' aggressiveness on the forecheck really standing out early. To Hartnell. Let's see if we can get something going here on the last bit of this power play. Up the wing. Two on two the other way. He's got the puck. Ooh, it was close. <laughs> got that one out of there in time. Lilia. Davinsky's stick in picking that one up shows he knew where that pass was going. He'd already CPU would. be in a good position to pick off the pass. One more opportunity on the power play. Yager. To Hartnell. The Rangers back at full strength. Boy, there's a fearless play right there. Put the body in front of it. Big 
shot. Save. And he'll stop play with that coverage of the puck. Defensive effort. Keep the opposing player from being able to do anything on the ice with this hit. He did. Yeah, he always goes out there and, and he hunts pucks, but he also hunts bodies. So there's a little taste of the uh, the Winter Classic, some of the two performance skating, some of the EA Sports Hockey IQ, and, you know, some of the presentation. So, you know, really proud of the, uh, the gameplay overhaul as a package itself. And the presentation just rounds it out nicely. Finds a loose puck, holds it in. So. Great pick, big opportunity. so that's a look at uh, NHL 13. It's coming out on September 11th on uh, it's Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Xbox 360, PlayStation 3. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. And keep an eye out for our upcoming review and for more content at GamesRadar.com. Thanks again.